I don't normally take a lot of nitrosagene during my strength training because I don't want that much blood flow. But if this is gonna help me get back to my day after I finish training, well, probably a pretty good idea for me. Welcome to Price Plow. We all have a funny post leg day story about maybe falling down the steps, uh, not being able to walk to the grocery store, not being able to walk to your car, you know, crawling out of the gym, but I'm sure you've also noticed that post-workout you're also cognitively impaired. Working out is a very strenuous thing, especially if you're training right, uh, and not a lot of people focus on actual post-workout cognitive repair, what will get you back up and moving for the day. Most of us train later in the day after we've finished our work for the day, and we go home, relax, eat dinner, play a video game, watch Netflix, or whatever. But what if I told you that there was something that could actually help you post-workout in terms of cognitive repair? Uh, in the past, we've talked about nootropics for studying, for work. We've even talked about video game supplements most recently. Uh, but we obviously know that Nutrition 21 has um, new level for video game enhancement and all that. There has been data on nitrosagene, which is the sister of new level, having help with cognitive flexibility, which means the ability to adapt to novel situations and such like that. But now there's actually data to suggest that nitrosagene post strenuous activity could help you with your cognitive impairment, maybe streaming from that strenuous activity, that training. Researchers from KSI Science ran a pretty interesting study using some cognitive tests and strenuous activity to see if nitrosgene post-workout could help with your impairment from that workout. Now, I know personally, after I max out on squats, after I compete, after any kind of huge compound movement, I actually end up having to utilize choline post-workout to try to get myself back up to a state with my brain where I can function, where maybe I'm answering Q and A's for you guys on Instagram, I'm doing a video like this. If I had to get some work done post-workout, I'm usually kind of useless if I've been squatting 700 pounds, right? Nitrosgy now has some interesting data to show that maybe that's absolutely uh, useful as well. So today I'm gonna dive into the study uh, from KSI Science about post-workout cognitive impairment and how nitrosgene can help it out for you. Now it's no secret that we're big fans of Nutrition 21 here between nitrosgene, New Level, Lipidamax, Chromax, Velocitol. There's a lot to love about this company. These guys have great human data. They don't rely on very much cellular data uh, and they also have some Pretty hard hitting stuff. Now, uh, there have been some ties between different ingredients, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Some people have brought up the fact that New Level and Nitrogen are very similar and kind of marketed to different uh, markets because of you know a 100 milligram difference in dosages, but a big difference in studies uh, with um, Chromax and Velocitol. There's obviously some similarities, but I like that Nutrition 21 takes similar ingredients, but studies them in specific ways to create claims to send them to different markets. So New Level has had the majority of the cognitive studies and claims as opposed to Nitrosgy, which has one study with the, the cognitive flexibility, and now it has another study in brain health and repair, but it's directly related to exercise. And that's what I like about what they're doing here is that the new level studies on cognitive stuff is strictly about decision making in video games. And nitrosgene is specifically on uh, training and post-workout repair, cognitive flexibility having to do with training. So that way, if you're going to put new level in a uh, gaming supplement, these people aren't going to look up new level and see training studies. They're going to see video game studies, and that's going to be relatable to them. And likewise, if a meathead looks up nitrosgene, they're seeing pump stuff. They're seeing post-workout repair stuff. They're not seeing video game supplements, which I used to think was the opposite of meathead, but during the quarantine days like this, we've found that that might not even be true. In any case, crossover or not, They've done a good job of separating these, pro these ingredients or products, whatever you want to call them, and making sure that there are claims and studies going each way. So how did these guys at KSI Science study this? Well, they used a randomized double-blind placebo control with crossover. These guys showed up. Uh, they were given a controlled breakfast. I think it was bagel with cream cheese and some juice. Uh, they were put through two tests. Now the tests are called a trail making test. TMT is, gonna, is what it is uh, abbreviated to in a lot of the writings. Now there's part A and part B. Part A of the TMT uh, assesses the ability to recognize objects based on color, pattern, shape, stuff like that. I haven't actually taken the test, but to give you an idea of the things that they're testing for here, you're uh, recognizing objects based on characteristics like their color, pattern, or shape. Part B is assessing cognitive flexibility and execu uh, executive functioning, basically decision-making, uh, 
adapting to different situations. Um, I'm assuming that they're giving you questions and decision based stuff and you're picking there. So eat breakfast, take the test, 15 minutes post test, they're given a, either 1.5 grams of nitrogen or 1.5 grams of maltodextrin, that being the placebo. Following that, which was in, by the way, in 296 milliliters of water, they were uh, put through a complete maximally graded exercise test. Um, after two weeks, they came back and the groups were swapped. The, the group that had placebo did the nitrogen and the group that had nitrogen did the placebo, thus the crossover section of the study. And I'm gonna be a little bit transparent here. In the study that we read, and I even called Heather when I read it because I thought maybe I was missing something, during the methods section, they say that they come in for breakfast, they take the test, they drink the product, they train. The method section is a little bit confusing here because it doesn't actually mention them doing the test again afterwards, but the data that they present shows a change in pre and post testing scores. So they don't actually tell you that they did it. I don't know if this is like some sort of typo or a mistake made, but you know, I, I wanna be transparent with you that the, it's written a little bit awkwardly. In any case, what were the results? Well. The main outcome measures of it were cognitive functioning, processing speed, and executive functioning. What were the uh, findings? Well, first off, they found that strenuous exercise leads to a significant decrease in cognitive performance. Just overall, it's going to be it's going to be slower. The placebo group had a significantly worse performance on the part A. Now, part B, it was a little bit closer, but part A, massive difference. So, subjects who consumed 1.5 grams of nitrogen had significant improvements in two things: the cognitive function tests and the speed to complete part A and part B. Part A was faster by 5% in the, uh, in the triazogen group and part B was actually faster by 7%. So overall, researchers found that subjects using the triazogen had actually much improved visual perceptive performance as well as their actual executive functioning. So they were faster and they made better decisions based on this. Now, this isn't too much of a surprise because we saw in the new level study that decision-making skills were vastly increased with or with or, well without the actual training here but we know that in a controlled setting playing video games or uh, on some of these tests where you're matching up numbers to letters in a certain fashion or pattern it's improved without the strenuous exercise now once you add the exercise it's interesting to see that the margin of difference i've put the graphs up here in this video a bunch of bet by now but the margin of difference between the placebo and the nitrogen group were pretty significant now one thing that i do want to say here is that nitrogen has its effects the blood flow effects even to the brain or the body for up to six hours um citrulline also does have this so this is not too much of a big big, big difference from the citrulline arginine argument to nitrogen but I wanna make sure that in this scenario, they were having them eat, take the test, drink the thing, work out, and take the test. But you could take this nitrogen pre-workout and have these benefits for up to six hours post-workout. I just wanna make sure that you know that. Now, lastly, I do have to say here that even with this whole breakdown, even as great as this, all this data is, I do wanna make sure that you know that we have a business affiliate relationship with uh, Nutrition 21. Now, we, d I do regularly go out to lunch with their president, Joe Weiss, Great guy, love the guys over there. They're super passionate about this industry. They bring great products to market and they're very outspoken in the industry on the quality of data and stuff like that. They know their shit and I'm proud of them for that. I'm proud to be a friend of theirs for that. Sometimes people think that we're a little bit biased because of that and it's entirely possible. I do help them formulate products with companies. I do help them get new level into products, and new products, all of this stuff. So it's entirely possible I do have some bias here. I do like the company, but just like a lot of other companies that we, we work with, we try to partner with companies that have data-backed ingredients, great manufacturing, and good standing in the industry in terms of relationships and quality of people. So I think that Nutrition 21 meets all of those, and this data today, I was pretty impressed with. As someone who is a high-level power lifter that post-workout often leaves the gym uh, drained, I don't normally take a lot of nitrogen during my strength training because I don't want that much blood flow. But if this is going to help me get back to my day after I finish training, well, probably a pretty good idea for me. So, takeaways here. Take your nitrogen pre-workout and get back to your work after workout. If you got to go do your homework, got to go study for a test, or you got to get, get some late night work, or you work out before work and you want to make sure that you're on point when you get to work, this is a great ingredient for you to look at in your next pre-workout. 
If you'd like to read more about it, you can go over to pricebelt.com slash nutrition21. We have all sorts of news reviews and interviews on their ingredients over there. If you have a question about their ingredients or this ingredient or this study or anything having to do with Nutrition 21, you can comment below and I'd love to talk about it. If you made it this far in the video, please leave a comment below. I love knowing when people make it to the end. I do get to see the analytics and I see where you guys drop off. It's usually where I tell you how I feel about the stuff or present the results. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I know this one went a little bit long. I really appreciate you watching. And as always, guys, have a great day. Welcome to Price Plow.